So yeah, Crippa training, if we go to the first slide, we see our agenda, uh, very briefly, introduction uh, to the uh, safety points. Uh, obviously a bit about hoses and their characteristics and the various components, along with the couplings. Um, a bit about the hose assembly machines and the various cutters and crimpers. A little bit about hydraulic cleanliness. Obviously that's, that's quite critical. And a little bit about hose assembly and the practicalities. So we'll dive straight into it. Introduction and safety points. So everybody has a responsibility for safety. So the hosing and coupling manufacturer, he obviously has to provide quality products. And of course, they have to be reliable, tested, and of course, guaranteed. The machine manufacturer, the people uh, who build the vehicles, they obviously have to design a, a safe, reliable, and robust hydraulic circuit. And obviously, the assembly supplier, he has to make sure that everything's correct. End user, obviously, um, Joe Bloggs, the man out uh, with the machine on the site or whatever, he obviously has to maintain the equipment in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations and the various on-site road standards that are obviously applicable to that, to that vehicle. And um, gates, uh, we have a big play, um, and you can see the yellow triangle there, um, safe hydraulics. And of course, um, not to put too fine a point on it, but uh, potentially uh, hydraulic fluid and the various componentry that go and make a circuit, it, it can be quite dangerous. So uh, you need to be really quite guarded about it. So if we go to the next next slide, obviously um, in most uh, things within life, we are covered and um, we have to abide by various sort of regulations and British standards and ISO standards and SAE standards that are part of our sort of day-to-day -day general life and the way we go about things. And um, this type of industry is no different. So uh, BS EN ISO 4413 of 2010. This standard obviously deals specifically with hydraulics and serves to protect obviously the operator of the machine and any workers and any sort of Joe public, general public that are around and about in the vicinity when this uh, product is working. So with regards to the hose assemblies, it covers obviously replacement, the performance requirements, the marking, traceability of course, storage and service life, obviously paramount the safe fitting onto the machine, a reduction of any hazard, operating temperatures, and obviously the, uh, the medium, the oil compatibility. Some important safety rules. Obviously, uh, again, another ISO standard. We'll throw quite a few of these at you during the, uh, the presentation, but ISO 4413, this actually covers the replacement of hose assemblies. And obviously, hose assemblies shall not be constructed from material, hose material, or couplings which have been previously used as part of an assembly. I think that's um, really quite uh, quite paramount. I think it makes perfect common sense that obviously if you've uh, affixed something and used something, why would you want to go and use it again? Obviously, uh, if you've got something that's uh, been in service for a long period of time or um, it's probably failed, why would you cut it off and reuse something? You would obviously naturally throw it in the uh, in the bin. So, um, as you can see in uh, in the yellow box there, caution, never mix couplings and hose from different manufacturers without a full test program. Never recrimp re or recouple used hose. 
I think if you take one thing from this uh, this session, I think that says it all for me. Um, I, I I do um, I do apologise for there being a, an EU flag there, um, as we are no longer UK within the uh, the EU. Um, I should take that out and put Brexit. So um, I'll I'll update the uh, presentation. Uh, performance requirements. Obviously, uh, flexible hose assemblies shall fulfil all performance requirements specified in the appropriate standards. And obviously, the most important test is the impulse test. And you can see here a, a quick snapshot of where the uh, the EN, the Euronorm standards are, where SAE, and of course, where Gates currently sits. And you, as you can see, Gates obviously test to quite a high level. And you can see that um, when you're looking at working pressure and various uh, Gates products there, G1, G2, M3K, M4K, then obviously we test to a, a very, very high number of cycles. And obviously that gives you the confidence of the, uh, of the product and the fact it's going to uh, fulfill all your performance requirements. The marking, um, obviously for traceability point of view, um, there is a, an ISO standard, 17165-1, and you can see from the, uh, the two snapshot pictures there, there is a assembler's name on there, there's a date of manufacture, year and month, and obviously there's a working pressure on there. So there is uh, full traceability and um, you know when the item has uh, has failed, you know exactly what to replace it with. There's no uh, no ambiguity there whatsoever. <clears throat> Hose lifetime. Uh, there's a British standard, uh, 5244, which covers the storage and service life. And uh, I don't think you need me to go through here. I think you can clearly see there are various sort of uh, age groups and obviously you can read through that obviously up to three years you use the product without any further testing and obviously um, three to five, five to eight, there is a level of, uh, of testing you need to do to approve and then anything over eight years, it basically goes in the scrap bin. Quite simple. Hose lifetime. Um, there are a number of factors which can uh, reduce the life uh, and reduce the uh, the hose in its sort of uh, in its state and obviously the job that it's doing. And so uh, there are a couple of bullet points here that uh, just want to quickly go through. But obviously you can imagine flexing the hose to less than the specified minimum bend radius. Obviously, it's not going to help the hose and its life. If you twist it, pull it, kink it, crush it, or you have something that is rubbing on the cover, then again, that's not going to uh, uh, keep the hose um, in its sort of working condition for very long. If you operate it above its maximum and below its minimum temperature, of course, that's uh, not going to help the uh, the hose in its application, and also exposing the hose to surge pressures above the maximum working pressure. And when you look at our catalogue, you'll see that, um, and you'll come, we'll come on to that in a little bit later in the presentation. You'll see there are various criteria laid down depending upon the size of the hose. We will specify the minimum bend radius and obviously the maximum minimum temperature and the, uh, the maximum working pressure. So it's clearly laid out. And obviously uh, intermixing hose, connectors, or assembly equipment, obviously not recommended by the manufacturer or not following his instructions when you obviously fabricate the hose assembly, then that's uh, gonna be a contributing factor to the hose obviously uh, failing at some stage. And apologies at the bottom here, there are a couple of little snapshots which uh, obviously show the uh, the hose and how it's twisted. And again here, 
the one in the middle again it shows you um the hose and how it's uh, it's wrongly been installed and how it should correctly be installed <clears throat> and then this picture here bottom right um interesting point something that uh i think you should take away from the uh, the meeting uh any any twist up to 7 degrees can shorten the hose life by 90% and i think that's uh quite self-explanatory the fact obviously you've got um, a seven degree amount of twist in it across its length obviously uh, in its day-to-day -day working conditions that obviously will shorten the uh, the hose life so quite quite a dramatic uh, reduction in in the hose life um, another uh, point in the agenda was obviously the reduction of, of hazards and of course um, the hose is installed on the machine or the hoses are stored on the machines. They're going to be moving big, big lumps of fabrication and steel. And obviously, um, if a hose suddenly decides to let go for some reason or other, then um, obviously that that item is going to have an awful lot of energy stored in it. And it's going to want to sort of uh, flail around in 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 the atmosphere so you obviously need to consider uh the whiplash the hose flailing around and obviously the amount of oil that there is being pumped around at some of the pressures these items are, are working at so um one of the things obviously you need to consider is a reduction of of those possible hazards and gates has typically got various covers uh, various guarding that will obviously uh, reduce those hazards and we'll come on to them in a, in a little while operating temperatures um, as I've already uh, sort of stated on the catalog page uh, you will see a, a full range of operating temperatures for the system and obviously uh, the idea is that you shall not exceed those specified limits and you need to sort of uh, work within a, a reasonable degree of uh, safety factor on those because obviously you have to take into consideration obviously the machine working and also the ambient temperature that the machine's working in so they have a an, a natural effect on uh, on the operating temperatures so just to make people aware obviously make sure you work within the uh, the guideline <clears throat> oil compatibility obviously um i guess these days in the uh with the, the the play on the environment and obviously the fact that everybody is trying to uh clean up um operating conditions and people don't want machines to leak and um hydraulic fluid being a, a mineral based product um people now are starting to to look at using um, hybrid type um, oils um, that are um, vegetable oil based or completely synthetic and compatibility does have a big play on uh, the actual hose and the, the the inner liner and the tubing of it so in the event of um, a customer or a potential user actually coming along and giving you the name of a particular fluid and it's something you're not really sure of, just make sure you ask him for the, the oil data sheet and check it out and make sure that the oil uh, is compatible with uh, the gauge product that you're thinking of using. It's uh, it's quite critical that some of these uh, environmentally friendly oils uh, are very aggressive and they can lead to uh, all sorts of things happening with the hose. So uh, advice would be to uh, just check it out. And we do actually have a, a list, a catalog list of uh, products that we've, uh, we've tested and we're happy uh, with, and it does contain a lot of these uh, environmentally free 
panel in and all of these sort of uh, products. Um, so yes, um, we, we we tested them and we can uh, we can advise what what to use and what not to use. Um, hoses themselves, um, a question I guess we all get asked from time to time: Why use a hose? Um, and I think the sort of four pictures there will show you sort of different applications. And obviously you use a hose because obviously there is a, um, an element of movement. The hose can move with uh, the, uh, uh, the hydraulic pressure and everything and the machine movement and um, everything that's going on in its day-to-day uh, -day, uh, activity. Obviously uh, being a rubberized product, it has got a degree of resistance to a bit of vibration and obviously you don't need to weld or braze anything so no no specific um, extra operations on whatever it is you're uh, you're making um, you don't obviously need to use any um, springs to obviously uh, or machines to make any specialized bending and obviously the hose is uh, really quite easy to route around and obviously uh, uh, when you're putting machines together there's always obstacles in the way and then the hose is usually quite uh, quite flexible and you're able to easily uh, fix them in. Um, again uh, being a, a rubberized product obviously there is a degree of uh, sand absorption as well and uh, they cut out sort of the uh, the noise of the pressure surges and and the like so they do um, tone the the machine noise uh, down quite considerably and obviously uh, quite important um, when your machines failed and it's in the middle of uh, Timbuktu um, fairly easy to obtain in the aftermarket The hose component, um, from the snapshot, we can see here three basic components. Obviously, the inner tube, and that obviously seals in the fluid, but obviously, on its own, it will not resist the pressure, and obviously, you need a degree of reinforcement. So, hence the uh, the braiding, the reinforce that obviously that that. That reinforcement provides the necessary strength to resist the internal pressure and obviously then the cover um, that protects everything else so protects the tube and the reinforcement and obviously then gives you a degree of protection from the outside environment and obviously depending upon uh, sort of which cover uh, you fit that will give you some uh, some degree of uh, protection Two main types of hose from gates, obviously wire braid and obviously the uh, the spiral. And you can see some sort of pictures here of typically um, the sort of colouring on the on the ley line of the hose. But we'll dig a little deeper into those in a in a little while. But obviously you can see two two wire and then obviously a multiple uh, spiral of uh, different levels of uh, reinforcement. Um, something that always confuses everybody, um, the hose dash size. And hopefully we'll try and sort of uh, explain that a little bit. So if you just take the, take the easy one. So if you use the one inch and that is a dash 16. So the mathematicians of amongst you will see that everything there is divisible by 16. And if you think along that line every time, then somebody tells you what a dash four is. It's quite simple to uh, to work out. So dash four quarter, dash six three eighths, dash eight half inch. So everything divisible by 16. Um. The hose markings uh, from the previous slide you saw that there was a, a nice little sort of color colored ley line down there and that's a sort of a typical uh, gates ley line and you can see here 
depending upon the uh, the hose pressure its capability you'll see different sort of color lines here from blue 3000 obviously red 5000 and yellow 8000 so those appear as do some of these other items obviously the the, the description obviously the performance specification and obviously the wire braiding and here you'll see just a little bit just there it uh, shows you a little like a little letter c that obviously shows you the type of coupling that goes goes on to it and all the information that you need uh, to make sure you're using the right hose in the right application is actually put put on there so the brand manufacturer and, and manufacturer his part number the size the working pressure the standards, the date code, obviously when it was manufactured, and obviously the fact that uh, it's got a degree of flame resistance. So all that information is put in a nice place on there where you can see everything. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, the hydraulics industry isn't like... Uh, Pretty, pretty much most industries these days, they, they like to work with acronyms. So within the industry, there is an acronym and obviously it's, uh, it's stamped. And obviously the letters, when you sort of dive into them, do, do actually mean something. Um, there's there's uh, a couple of other um, different acronyms, but this is the one we tend to, tend to use. Um, so... S, obviously, that's the size. And obviously, if you take off a half-inch hose, then naturally, you'd want to replace it with a half-inch hose. Why would you put on anything bigger or smaller? Um, T, temperature. Obviously, most hoses will work up to 100 degrees C. Um, and obviously, uh, when you're choosing a hose and making a specification and some some bills of materials to look at something then obviously the operating temperature system should be known um, before you actually make those choices it's clearly you don't want to work outside those uh, that specification um, the application uh, that's a nice to know because obviously then you can make um, a good choice as to what type of uh, cover you probably need if it's in a very hot, dusty, and very uh, aggressive um, environment, you might need to just uh, pick the right cover to uh, ensure you've got some uh, some longevity of the of the hose. Um, so getting the application, that's uh, normally a, a good thing. Um, obviously, M, the medium, again, you need to know what hydraulic fluid is going through the hose. Um, pressure of course probably the most important letter and obviously uh, you need to know that because obviously uh, you should never replace a hose with a, a lower specification product um, yeah quite quite critical and obviously then the ends um, those are the couplings on on each end so you need to know what you're going to fit on the end of there as regards the thread size and whether it's uh, a straight or a 45 or a 90 or a block or a split flange so knowing the ends of the couplings that's uh, that's quite critical and obviously then you need to know what the flow rate through the hose is going to be um, because there's a little uh, nomogram that obviously um, you would work with and you would actually look at and use to size the the right hose so you need to know the pressure and the fluid and the fluid flow rate and from that nomogram you can actually make sure you choose the right hose and I'll show you that in a little while and just to um, just to uh, sort of uh, make a finer point that obviously um, Gates is uh, very innovative as, a, as an organization and obviously um, 
we like to sort of challenge um, and we brought out over the last uh, number of years new product and obviously one of those is is MXT um, and you find uh, some details of that actually on on the web page but um, yeah we're happy to share with you uh, the new products and obviously that's uh, that's one that we've had some very very good success with it's um, the next generation of uh, premium products and it has got some really really good advantages it's lightweight and it's very very flexible so um, if you've got a really uh, challenging application then um, from experience personal experience it's a, it's a great product to uh, to work with so just uh, just to show that to uh, everybody and obviously this is uh, a little bit of the sort of marketing uh, information obviously showing you the demands and uh, the performance wins and like no other product it's obviously uh, it fulfills all the relevant test standards international standards um, typically this would be a sort of a catalog page um, to two gates products here so m3k m4k and here you can see the sort of general details of the hose and its sizes along with its bend radius its burst pressure its outside diameter and then here we list the recommendations and the the specifications and all the relevant standards that uh, that it meets and that's typically uh, how you uh, if you go into the catalog that's how you would specify the uh, the right product again that's just um, uh, just shows you a spiral hose and again uh, the different sort of pressure ratings and burst pressures for for that product typically a, a catalog page and again, a, a typically a, an EFG 6K catalog page. And here it's just highlighting the fact that there are different covers, optional covers that are available depending upon the application. <clears throat> here, um, a quick slide that shows you a little bit about the, uh, the different covers that are available. Um, mega tough and extra tough. And obviously, uh, we obviously test our product and and um, you know it's it's extremely good when it, it's judged against others and competitors and obviously um, if you have a, an application that um, is quite challenging then um, give us a call uh, we can talk through it uh, we've got application engineers based at all around Europe and I'm sure they'll more than happily give you uh, uh, their uh, experience on on some of these products and how they uh, stand the test of time but certainly mega tough and extra tough covers uh, they're they're good when it comes to uh, abrasion some other items here um, types of guard that you may come across or want to use obviously we have uh, depending upon where the hose is and it's close proximity to public and operators then uh, and obviously challenging areas of the machine where it might be rubbing against something then these guards um, uh, can help and they can sort of act as a bit of a sacrificial um, the nylon sleeve obviously that would go over the hose and that would give you a, a degree of protection and usually we sort of crimp those on the polyurethane sleeving again that gives you just a uh, a bit more protection of the cover and obviously uh, um, you would put that on and that would uh, give you a, a little bit of an extra layer of, uh, of protection on the on the hose itself um, the round guard, the spring guard, uh, you tend to find that on sort of big excavators where there's big lumps of rock and uh, limestone and those type of things. Again, it just acts as a bit of a sacrificial, protects the hose a wee bit. Uh, and obviously the flat and the thermoplastic armor guard, again, 
it's like another layer that's wrapped onto the hose. And again, that gives you a, another degree of protection. So um, it's about obviously protecting the, the outside cover of the hose and just giving it that extra bit of uh, um, something there just to, to help it in its day-to-day. Um, today's technology. So here we have a, a hydraulic port, a rigid steel tube. Obviously, we have a port adapter, a tube fitting, the hydraulic hose assembly, obviously the hose material, the coupling with the insert on both ends. And that's that's today's technology. So you're, you're coupling up from a rigid steel tube on a piece of steel fabrication and you're going into a, a cylinder on a valve block or a port. And that's typically how you would, uh, how you would connect it up. And obviously with a coupling interface, yeah. <clears throat> the coupling interface, basically we're just looking at the end of the hose here. So it's function, obviously we want to have it, well, we want to make sure it's got a leak free joint. And obviously there is a degree of mechanical retention. And the mechanical retention obviously is between the coupling and the hose material. So the qualities, obviously it's got to be capable of taking the pressure that you're going to apply to it. And obviously through the, the center of the insert here, you need to try and maximize the bore through the coupling. Um, it's designed to be a, a space saving um, device in that obviously the, the nut will push back and allow you to uh, make a, a connection within a quite a short length so it's um, it's quite flexible in that in that respect and obviously there is a degree of uh, compatibility obviously metal to metal and metal to rubber so uh, it's easy to install and obviously the general idea is it withstands any sort of influences, whether they be internal or external. So general idea is once it's been fastened up and talked, then it's basically leave it alone. And of course, um, the hose, the machine, the environment that some of these vehicles work in, uh, you need to have a, a reasonable degree of corrosion resistance because, uh, yeah, uh, some of the uh, obnoxious sort of um, liquids and, and materials that are obviously going around, um, the last thing you want to do is uh, have a, a level of rust on these. So corrosion resistance, again, is quite, quite important. The leak-proof hose and the coupling interface is obviously determined by the profile of the insert, the characteristics of the hose tube, obviously the crimping on the outside and obviously the ferrule type. The hose and coupling interface, just to sort of show you here where, where Gates compares with uh, the competition. And here at the bottom, you can see uh, how the Gates mega crimp coupling uh, you, when you're crimped, you have a, an evenly distributed uh, force around the whole of the crimp. And obviously you see the, the C insert um, and how that is gripping and um, biting into the, into the wire. So that ensures you've got good, good retention there. Look at the competitor and you can see there's... Uh, potential weak paths and obviously there's an inconsistent crimp there so um, yeah it uh, just shows you the difference between uh, gates and their competition um, couplings yeah there's a, a plethora of these uh, just a few sort of examples but um, yeah we have many many different uh, variants 
whether they be straight, 90, 45, block flanges, split flanges, uh, you name it, uh, we've either got it or we can do it. And obviously uh, there are two main coupling types from gates, obviously the two-piece and obviously uh, the, uh, the, the spiral and obviously then the one-piece obviously is the uh, mega crimp. Just going into a little bit about how, uh, how, the, how the code numbers are built up as such, obviously you see the 6G6F BSP LRX. Obviously, the 6 is the hose size, the G is the coupling type, the end size is obviously 6. In fact, F is the female end, the type of thread is BSP, OR is the seal, and X is a swivel knot. So you can see on the bottom left hand corner here, so that typically how a BSP coupling would, would look. And the general dimension, general dimensions to it. You then look at obviously the global spiral, and you see again the 6GS6 FBSP ORX. You see the host size, the coupling type, the female, and the end size, the female end BSP, and the O ring seal and the swivel knot. And typically, here you see there is a the, the coupling and the ferrule. So that would be a, a two-piece coupling, so you need both of those items. Um, just a typical example of uh, a common UK termination, so BSP, uh, and looking at the sort of male 60 degree sort of cone end, and obviously the female again with the 60 degree cone end. And we see that quite typically across most of uh, most of the UK. There are one or two others, but that's uh, typically a, a common UK termination. And the machines, just a quick sort of snapshot of a few of the cutting machines, the crimping machines, uh, marking, uh, obviously um, the, uh, the micrometer to, to measure the crimp and the insertion depth gauge that you would use to typically once you cut the uh, the hose you need to mark it somehow to ensure you've got the hose fully inserted into the coupling um the uh the cleaning obviously um a pellet gun uh, typically to uh clean as much of the um the debris out of the hose obviously after you've uh, you've cut it Um, typically one, one crimper, the M625, is good for low volume production, it's ideal as a starter for small workshops and um, it gives a, a good, a good crimp, it's quite easy to use, quite flexible and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's easy to, to operate. Other ones that uh, you may come across, um, the MCX20, the hand pump, um, and in the uh, MC2501, again, um, given distant past, obviously, uh, yeah, they still, they're still going, so you may well come across them. <clears throat> the assembly practicalities. Creating a correct assembly, doing it safely. Obviously, you need to measure, you need to cut, mark, insert, and then obviously make sure the couplings are uh, got the right orientation between the two. Obviously, there is a, a data sheet with the crimp on it, and you would then crimp the uh, the couplings, and then you would measure to make sure they they meet the right diameter. So determining the cut hose length, um, we would sort of typically go overall length 
or would be cone to cone and obviously then you would take off the um, the coupling length to then make sure you've got uh, the right dimension so typically that's how we would uh, dimension it up obviously then you would uh, cut mark and insert so obviously you would Make sure you try and cut the hose as square and as straight as you can. And typically we would uh, say that a cut angle of uh, five degrees there, that's typically what you need to try and achieve to make sure it's nice and square. You then place the hose next to the coupling and use your finger as a, a bit of a depth gauge to, to mark the hose. And then you push the coupling onto the hose until it reaches your thumb and then uh, twist to make sure you've got full insertion alternatively you can use the uh, the insertion tool it's typically shown there on the right hand side you would push the hose into the insertion tool and make a mark and then obviously what you would then do is push the hose into the into the tool into the uh, coupling up up to that mark for a two piece um, you would obviously fit the ferrule over the uh, hose end first. Uh, you would lubricate or literally uh, put some, uh, some lightweight oil there. You would sort of clamp the stem and then with a bit of a vice and obviously then push or use with a sort of a plastic hammer or rubber mallet to make sure you've got sort of full insertion there. And then um, you would then crimp. The orientation, obviously, you would make the uh, the first the first end. You would make that vertically, and crimp it, and then looking on that end on, on the second end down towards the uh, the, ver the first end, you would then phase the second end. So, as it says in the uh, in this picture here in the bottom right, the first end is vertical, and then you would orientate the second end relative to that. So looking at the clock face um, 0, 90, 180 and that's shown at, at 270 degrees other, other people have different ways of doing it but that's how we uh, that's how we assemble um, this used to be the uh, the way that we used to present the uh, the crimp data sheet um, just recently we bought out a little uh, a little app that's good for the iPhone or the Android, but typically uh, you would start out with the, the crimp data sheet. And obviously here you would then choose the, the hose, the size, and then you would use the correct, use the correct die set. You choose that and the correct uh, gauge setting. And then you would then position in the crimper and then you would crimp. And then typically you would use the micrometer to ensure you've got the right finished crimp diameter. And of course, you obviously would make sure you use the right hose material, the right coupling type machine. And typically that would be the same. Um, for different different sizes, you see uh, that one typically would be a, a two piece coupling. So again, you would need to ensure you get the right the right crimp sheet but that's all been sort of uh, superseded uh, by this little app now this little app on your iPhone literally you make sure you 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 cl click on the right machine and then you go through uh, sort of various uh, um, yeah I thought I thought perhaps there was a another picture there I thought um, I can't go back now actually I thought there was uh, another picture of the e-crimp but, but literally you uh, would um, click on the icon and then you would choose uh, your machine and then typically the hose material the size and then it would tell you exactly what the crimp diameter is you need to achieve and you would then measure it um, safe crimper operation obviously uh, safety specs obviously stay clear of the equipment no loose clothing 
ensure the equipment is securely mounted and obviously follow the operation instructions and, and crimp. <coughs> Crimping procedure, obviously you obtain all the necessary information for the hose, the coupling, the gauge and the dies. Load the right dies and locate in the crimp position, set the gauge setting to the correct value. Insert the hose and locate the ferrule within the dies, usually five millimeters from the front, ensuring then obviously it's fully engaged along its whole length. Wear spectacles, make sure your, your clothes are clear of the moving parts, activate the mechanism, remove the assembly from the dies and then measure. And then normally what we would uh, advise is you then cap the hose with a plastic plug. And here is the, uh, the, uh, the micrometer, obviously uh, would then measure the, uh, the crimp diameter and of course the, uh, the Gates uh, vernier micrometer is such that you can actually uh, measure quite, uh, quite small diameters and get over the, uh, the ridges that obviously uh, have, have been formed as part of the crimping process where the die is obviously uh, squeezed up. So you would uh, typically measure in sort of two or three places along the length of the ferrule to make sure you've uh, achieved the right crimp diameter. And obviously uh, some pictures here showing you the importance of crimping correctly. Obviously over crimp, under crimp, mushroom flare, tail flare. Obviously those could all lead to uh, early failure of the hose or coupling leaks. And obviously, any questions? I think I've seen one or two sort of uh, comments coming up about the, uh, the volume. Um, apologies for that. Um, don't quite know why, uh, why that was so, but um, if there's any questions, then uh, well, I can see there's quite a few chats. So uh, let's have a look at, uh, let's stop that. And let's have a look at um, some of the chats. Okay, thank you for that, Cindy. I thought I was perhaps shouting a little bit, but I do apologize if, if I was. Um, not used to speaking to the wall, unfortunately. Uh, apologies for the sound. If it was uh, lowered, I was trying to keep as close to the microphone as I could do without uh, putting my uh, myself on the desk. Um, any any questions, anybody? Um, I guess out of this there will come a, a list of, uh, of people, of attendees, if uh, people want a copy of the presentation, um, then i am happily uh, supply that. Uh, one, one chat here, our competitor Parker has vertical crimpers, which in your opinion is better? Um, I guess it depends really I suppose on what what your choice is um, I, I think it's it's good to be on a, a sort of a same level as the crimp as a die rather than looking down on top of it so that's just a preference but I think it's entirely uh, down to the individual anything else anybody I hope, uh, hope it's been uh, informal and uh, not too death by PowerPoint. Yes, um, Leroy, if you um, want to copy the presentation, then um, I'll, uh, I'll put my email address here. spell it right so if uh, people want to send me uh, an email 
then I'll uh, pass on the presentation to uh, to everybody. Um, other than that, thank you for attending. Um, I hope everybody has uh, a COVID-free day. Oh, sorry. Went to calculate cut length. Experience shows 10 millimeter extra length after crimping. Any comments on this? Um, normally, uh, our experience is such that um, we we would normally, um, depending upon, let's let's say you've got a hose and it's a meter. Normally, what um, cone to cone that is a meter cone to cone normally what we would do we would take off what the the dimension of the coupling is to the insert of both ends and that's what that's what we make it that's what we make it to um yeah you're absolutely right louis um as i said there are certain uh, acronyms that are used uh, perfect is one stamped is another uh, depends whether you're from the UK or from France. My, my colleague, uh, Jean-Francois Segura, he uses perfect, um, but other people within the industry uh, use stamped. I think it's uh, whatever your preference is, but they mean exactly the same and the acronym means exactly the same. A Frenchman and an Englishman, Louis, they never mix. Okay, everybody, um, if that's uh, the last contentious uh, part of the meeting, then uh, shall we all go and get a cup of coffee? Have the rest of a good day then, everybody. Call it, uh, call it a day. Thank you kindly. Oh, sorry. Which is your experience with the portable GC sixteen XT crimper battery pump? Um, again, I think it's those sort of things the portable ones uh, are, are, are literally depends on 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 your own sort of situation and condition and and i guess the workshop and and ultimately how many hoses you've got to manufacture i think there's there's no right and there's no wrong so um clearly if you're out somewhere and you need to make something and a battery charger um, and a battery operated crimper is there then i think um yeah, use it. Okay, last, 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 last final, last final. Okay, we'll call it a day. Thanks, everybody. Much appreciate it. Have the rest of a good day and talk to you soon. Thank you. Cheers.